Hi everyone, so if you've been following my blog, you'll know that I have for the last month been living in Greece. I spent my first two weeks in Athens and I spent my last two weeks here on the island of Zakynthos. All The whole time I've been with different members of my family and due to that I have been able to be exposed to the migrant crisis. Let me just say, migrant crisis, refugee crisis, asylum seeker crisis, that is the shifting of people from countries that are war-torn, uh, Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan mostly, and um, people finding their way to Europe. Before I'd left Australia, we had this sort of fear-mongering media presence in regards to the uh, this crisis and but seeing as how far away we are we didn't really care about that like too much at all um, Australia is historically known as being incredibly damaging <laughs> to people who are fleeing their countries uh, there is what we call mandatory detention for asylum seekers that reach our country. We also have a turn back the boats policy as well for specific cases. I'll put a link down below but what happens in Australia is that if people arrive on boats and they're caught before they're actually into shore they're sent for offshore processing. It's pretty much a jail sentence. So they can be kept in there for indefinite periods of time if they're seen as a security risk. Uh, it's pretty much a jail. There have been a lot of accusations of rape. Uh, recently, in the last week or two, there was a woman who was on Nauru uh, and she said she'd been raped and was pregnant and she travelled to Sydney and they didn't give her those services and then sent her back. But now the immigration minister has said that she can come back to talk about getting an abortion and mental health support. People are in detention centres. Um, these aren't just adults, these are children. There are children that are born in these detention centres. At the end of last year, the Australian Human Rights Commission had created a report using qualitative and quantitative evidence to suggest that mandatory detention policy that we have in Australia is one that is completely detrimental to the health, the well-being of children. So this report was called the Forgotten Children, National Inquiry into Child Children in Immigration Detention. Uh, the president of the Australian Human Rights Commission, G uh, Gillian Triggs, is very particular in the way that she sums up this report and you can find that on the links below. It'd only be a couple of pages long, but really have a read of it because it completely opens your eyes to how horribly we treat people that are leaving the country because of wars that we've created, propagated or supported, and yet we don't see these people as being equal to us. There's a difference between being nasty and detrimental to the health of people that are not children, but when it comes down to it, there have been many, many violations of the human rights of children, as summarised in this report. So there are a few points that I'll pick out, which is the findings of the inquiry. Children in immigration detention have significantly higher rates of mental health disorders than children in the Australian community. Both the former and current Ministers for Immigration agreed that holding children for prolonged periods in remote detention centres does not deter people, smugglers or asylum seekers. There appears to be no rational explanation for the prolonged detention of children. The right of all children to education was denied for over a year to those held on Christmas Island. The Minister for Immigration and Border Protection, as the guardian of unaccompanied children, has failed in his responsibility to act in their best interests. The Commonwealth's decision to use force to transfer children on Christmas Island to a different centre breached their human rights. The numerous reported incidents of assaults, sexual assaults and self-harm involving children indicate the danger of the detention environment. 
at least 12 children born in immigration detention are stateless and may be denied their right to nationality and protection. Dozens of children with physical and mental disabilities are detained for prolonged periods. Some children of parents assessed as security risks have been detained for over two years without hope of release. Children detained indefinitely on Nauru are suffering from extreme levels of physical, emotional, psychological and developmental distress. Who can take a look at that and then decide that that is a completely normal reaction? That is just the best thing ever. Don't you look at that and just go, that is absolutely perfect. I don't know how you could develop on this process anymore. It obviously seems to be completely perfect because, what, a few days ago Tony Abbott was requested to give a lecture, a memorial lecture, for Margaret Thatcher. And he said some really interesting, interesting things about his opinion on our immigration policy that he supported and implemented and gave his advice to the rest of Europe and his forewarning as to what they might be getting themselves into if they do not act in the same way that we have as an Australian government. So I have several, several reasons why I believe this is completely horrible and just shows how much of an... Either Tony Abbott is a Rhodes Scholar and a complete moron, or he just has very strange moral values. But whatever it is, he does not have the right to go out when there is so much evidence against him and say that not only what we've been doing as a country is right, but that it should be adopted as a model for other countries. So another point to make before I go on was that Gillian Triggs, who is the president of the Australian Human Rights Commission, was attacked in the media and by Parliament um, saying that she should not have released that report. Not saying that it wasn't right, but not that it should not have been released. So why... If there's so much doubt there, why if there's so much evidence to show that this is something that is completely inhumane and a huge breach of human rights, why does Tony Abbott think that this is a great idea? Well, I'll tell you a few things that he said, and then I can tell you why he's full of shit. A quote that I'd like to take from this speech that Tony Abbott had made was that, in reference to Margaret Thatcher, her focus, were she still with us, would be the things of most consequence. Managing the na nation changing, culture shifting population transfers now impacting on Europe, winning the fight in Syria and Iraq, which is helping to drive them, and asserting Western civilization against the challenge of militant Islam. Okay, so... First of all, you recognise the fact that our involvement in wars as Western countries in Iraq, Afghanistan and Syria have created a situation in which people feel the need to pack up their entire lives with whatever family they have left and go <laughs> in a boat that's pretty much a shanty in the middle of the ocean. Do you think all those people that arrive here are militant Muslims? that practice militant Islam, they're not. And, and why do I know that? Because when I was in Athens recently, um, the first day that I arrived, my auntie picked me up from the airport and she mentioned to me that the suburb that we were staying in, uh, Galati, they had just the day before or that day opened up the old Olympic Stadium that um, was left over from the Athens Olympics. They were letting the refugees and asylum seekers um, into that area for shelter. Shelter. And, and every day you saw in the news different people coming and helping as much as they could, the people that have left these war-torn countries. Also, t keep in mind that Greece is still under um, capital control meaning that you can't um, use 
more than about 60 euro a day. These people have, out of the goodness of their own hearts, decided to bring water and bread and whatever else they can to these people that have just gone through something so incredibly traumatic. One of the main places that people in, um, had flocked to in Athens was the Victoria Square Plaza area, which is pretty much in the middle of Athens. Before I left Australia, I had told myself that I wanted to try and interview um, people from Syria and how their experiences are different in each country in which they've arrived in. I haven't done that yet. Um, I really don't know the best way to go about it, but I did one day when I was in Athens sit in Victoria Square for about two hours contemplating the situation that we had in front of us. Uh, a lot of people there had already moved on, so there were only a few families that had been um, sleeping there. And what I eventually decided to do after uh, quite some deliberation was to buy some water, buy some bread from the bakery, some chocolate biscuits. Um, I went along to one, one family and I sat down with them and gave the children biscuits and gave them some water and uh, they didn't want any bread. And I would have done that more, but I got a bit socially anxious after that first occurrence, so I decided to um, just leave it all on a bench there for anyone who wanted to take it to take it. I don't know what happened to it. But the point was, I got to see these families that are obviously Muslim. They were most likely from Afghanistan, um, as, uh, as people from Syria are more secular. However, I can't be sure. And... And even though the little kids did want biscuits, their parents seemed a little bit embarrassed with what I was doing, um, which was what made me socially anxious. So, but I got to see the face and talk to the people who have gone through these things, these atrocious things, absolutely horrifying things, and know that they're just human. Each of them, each one of these people is as human as you are. I, what Tony Abbott said in London has really ground, ground my gears because what he's essentially saying is that there is an us and them superiority thing going on. That Western people are far superior to anyone from any other country. So I had a few points to make. As to why, I think Tony Abbott is a complete and utter moron. Firstly, our mandatory detention policies are, are wrong on so many levels, including a few that I've just touched on before. How dare he preach about this little more than a month after being ousted as Prime Minister of Australia? Also, his speech obviously supports the idea that pretty much everyone knew about Tony Abbott anyway, which was that he prefers Ang white Anglo-Saxon Christian people. And anyone else is obviously inferior. And anyone who lives in Australia will know how much of a racist country we are. Or well, maybe you don't see it, but I definitely have seen it firsthand. But to say that to anyone else just seems so obvious and brash and just disgusting in my opinion. He obviously sees a division between the people that don't live in the western world and people that do. This assumption of hierarchy and superiority just really gets to me. Everyone is human, everyone should be treated equally just when it comes to fundamental, fundamental basic human rights. Also, it was obvious from Tony Abbott's speech that he felt that people were just looking for an excuse to come to more prosperous Western countries. Specifically, he said, Naturally, the safety and prosperity that exists almost uniquely in Western countries is the 
irresistible method. That is so completely wrong and disgusting. It doesn't matter where you're from, why would you want to pack up all your things, go on such a treacherous journey, leave your home behind, if you even have one anymore. The reason people are fleeing is due to the wars that we have created, propagated and supported. This is not due to any fact besides that. If people wanted to leave, they would do it through the normal channels. And yet they probably wouldn't go to Australia because we're pretty damn bad at immigration, even legally, when it comes to people that aren't ideal. So people are not choosing to migrate. All my family, when they left from Europe, three of them came as immigrants. Um, they had the choice of going to America, they had the choice of going to Canada, they had the choice of going to Australia. But they decided to go to Australia and leave here. It was their decision to move. That is very different. They had already gone through World War II, that was over. They had gone through the Greek Civil War, which was also over. But then they decided that they would take a risk and go somewhere else just to see what happens. That's very different from being an asylum seeker or seeking refuge. There are so many children that have been traumatised. Drones and double tap strikes. And those people though that are living in that reality day and night, even though that it has nothing to do with them, yeah, they're, they're obviously choosing. Um, that as an excuse to come to our country. Australia is incredibly good at keeping people that are trying to come into our community as asylum seekers and such um, completely out of sight for us. Like that was the f when I saw the, the people in Victoria Square, that was the first time that I'd actually seen one, someone face to face and was able to say, you have left your country and have come here. Um, everyone else, like in Australia, everyone's so good at hiding it. Like we even stick all these people on another island and just go, yeah, 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 just just out of sight, out of mind. Um, do what you want with them, really. They're, they're undimension, to use the Nazi term, subhuman. And I think that's very apt for Tony Abbott. Um, but... What just really frustrates me is that he has actually gone out of his way to promote our incredibly, incredibly racist, anti-Islamic, because yes, Islamic people are targeted far more often in these cases, and say that this is the best way to go. Who could do any better than this than Australia? He also says there are tens, perhaps hundreds, of millions of people living in poverty and danger who might readily seek to enter a Western country if the opportunity is there. Who could blame them? Yet no country or continent can open its borders to all corners without fundamentally weakening itself. This is the risk that the countries of Europe now run through misguided altruism. It's not altruistic. Uh, the only thing that makes it altruistic is that the people that are actually letting them come into the countries freely are the ones that actually aren't fucking up their countries. We though, on the other hand, go, no sorry, we just want to bomb you and allies with other western countries and, but you can't come here after. Also, what I loved was the fact that he tried to make the point that in Europe, as with Australia, people claiming asylum invariably have crossed not one border, but many, and are no longer fleeing in fear, but are contracting in hope with people smugglers. However desperate, almost by definition, they are, ec they are economic migrants because they have already escaped persecution when they decided to move again. Our moral obligation is to receive people fleeing for their lives. It's not to provide permanent residency to anyone and everyone who would rather live in a prosperous Western country than their own. Okay, why do you, as Prime Minister, well, ex-Prime Minister, think that 
everyone who does not live in a Western country is somehow superior to people who do not live in Western countries. Many Western, many non-Western countries were absolutely fine before every Western country got involved there to try to mix up the politics, to roll the dice again and hopefully get something to win in their favour. No one looks at the body of their dead child next to them and goes, ah, that's a fucking perfect excuse. You know what, I'm going to go to Australia. No, you know what, there is far too much that I can pick out of Tony Abbott's speech right here in front of me that I'm going to suggest that if you guys want to discuss this any further uh, and get any more information on it and my opinion on it, um, follow the link below down to my website. I really hope that people are looking at these issues and thinking seriously about them. Um, I've got to say that uh, for my stay in Europe, it's been definitely very eye-opening as to the way in which we could one day conduct ourselves to act more like human beings than just act like lazy robots. Sheep? Whatever. Act like the way we've been acting. Like, there are people out there that I know that are Australian who are very against the immigration policies that we've had since Paul Keating, but at the same time, I know a lot of people that will also disagree with me on this and think that what we do do is more humane and, you know, is better for us in the long run than accepting uh, asylum seekers into our country. Uh, I really, really would love to get your opinion on this because it's something that we all really should be thinking about. And so, I want to hear your opinion if you agree with me, I want to hear your opinion if you think I'm nuts by saying this, um, and also if you, if this resonated with you on any level, feel free to share it because it'd be great if we can just get as many people as possible giving their input and just starting a discussion on this issue. Um, so I don't really have anything else left to say, but that's it, and yeah, let me know what you think, guys.